Okay, so now let's start bringing our objects into uh, Solaris and uh, see how we can make this unified shading setup. All right, so we have this clean scene. Well, I have my um, only my objects here. Um, my stage is it's completely empty. So we're going to start from scratch and you can see my scene graph. It's also totally empty and we see going to see how we're going to set this up. Okay, so uh, you can see here on my uh, object context, I have some objects that I created uh, in Houdini. Some of them are outside, etc. But I have some objects like you have a table here. Some of these objects in the uh, in the spirit of the uh, team of of the image we're creating, which is a Mexican kind of still life image. All the names are in Spanish, so you're also gonna learn a little bit of Spanish here. Uh, while learning some Solaris. All right, so uh, this we have a, a mesa here, which is a table. Uh, this is just a Houdini object that I, uh, an object that I imported and and I finished here in Houdini. As you can see I just have uh, the object there imported. I just did some bevels, etc. Um, and I just have a quick quick. Um, shade here quick material here just to check the the texture here just to see it uh, and see what's how is it looking in houdini of course this is not going to be translated into solaris we're going to see how we need to assign the shaders ourselves so i also have here mantel which is just uh, the tablecloth here that uh, i simulated in in bellum and uh, added UVs, etc., and then just textured in in Substance Painter, which is really simple for this. Uh, you can see we have just a few notes here. I deleted the the rest of, of what we uh, don't need here, but this is really important because most people are wondering how do I get my stuff from SOPS into uh, Solaris to rendering. Uh, you can also just import stuff directly in in uh, in Solaris and skip this, but I guess most most people were gonna have some stuff in Houdini already and want to take it into Solaris. So I'm gonna show you how you do that. All right. So I also have this uh, plate of totopos, uh, which is just uh, chips. I guess it's in English. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so let's have this uh, this plate here with uh, these totopos. Uh, and uh, we're gonna import this guys uh, in a different way because this has several materials and the other ones, the first I show you are have only one material assigned. So, all right, so let's go to stage here. And uh, the first thing we need to do, you can see the, the, the scene viewer stays behind uh, if you haven't selected anything on stage. So what I do sometimes to just trigger it, I just create like a torus shape here and it just, just now the the viewport here is in solaris solaris land oh why is this uh wireframe let me make this shoot smooth, smooth shader so there we go i'm we're not i'm not, we're not gonna use that torus i just wanted to trigger that uh the first thing we're gonna see uh how to import uh from sops is actually if you type sop you have uh, a few nodes here for sops uh, you can have a uh, sub network uh, modify a uh, sub uh, sub import and sub create so you can actually create stuff here, uh, like a, like any, like you can actually create stuff here. just like in the sub context, if you drop that node and go inside, this is basically the sub context here already. You can create the, the rubber dog. I mean, the rubber, uh, toy here, which is my friend, Roberto. You can just, uh, if you go back, you can see it. now it's in Tolaris, etc. Uh, you can just use this actually as your new, uh, sub context if you want to and then be back into Solaris automatically basically so let's just uh, delete this guy uh, the other thing you can do is uh, bring this uh, type sub again and you can import uh, from sub so you can that uh, which is what we're gonna use here you can say sub import doesn't create anything it wants to uh, bring something from subs of course so uh, I always gonna load this as a reference and then I'm going to select uh, the, the, the the sub that I'm gonna import. So if you go here to sub path, click that, uh, I'm gonna import the Mesa first. I'm just selecting that. 
accept and you can see there it is that's how simple it is to bring your stuff from SOPS into Solaris. So you can see this is already in Solaris. I can start rendering with Karma and doing all the stuff that uh, that we need. So uh, so let's start organizing our uh, scene tree because if we start just bringing stuff here, uh, we're gonna have uh, a mess of stuff and it's gonna take some time to to uh, organize everything. So what I do. What I like to do, uh, it's you don't have to do this, but I like to uh, create a primitive first. I just create a primitive, which is basically just a single entity in in um, USD. You can see it is there a primitive, and uh, I like to call this scene. Just call this scene, which is basically going to be my root, my root element. So you can see now we have a scene root there. Uh, I don't want it to be uh, of type transform. You can see how a primitive type of transform. I want it to be a type of um, group. So I can just say primitive kind here and change it to group. And there it is, it's a group. And this is where I'm gonna put all my objects uh, below. You, again, you don't have to do this, but I like to. It's, it's kind of makes me feel like there's an object that I'm putting stuff into. I don't want to select, uh, do anything else here. Uh, this is getting uh, this scene name. It, uh, it's passing on here because of this. If you want to call this something else, you can just this dollar OS just basically means get the name of the node. Uh, if I type anything else here, that's going to be actually the name here. Uh, by default, it's just getting the, the name of the node, which is it's cool for us. So we can get in the scene and you can see here, it tells us where it's put in this, this scene, it's under scene. Uh, so that is uh, how I'm gonna extract, structure the scene. Uh, now, the next thing I, I do is I add a sub layer, which is a, a way to just graph stuff here in, in, the, in the scene graph or one way. I'm gonna uh, put this as the first input here. And then the sub layer, you can actually import stuff from here. You can just go to this file and import a file if you want to there. Uh, I not going to do that. I'm going to use a sub layer basically for merging. So the first thing we need to change here is this uh, sub layer type to sub layer inputs here. And then just plug this as in this multi input uh, input here, <laughs> multi input input. So now if we select the sub layer, you can see we have the scene, which is a component, but it's, it's just uh, an organization one. And this, the object that we merged here, if we click this, we now have two things. You can see this sub import uh, node here, which is called that in, in this uh, graph there. Uh, this guy here, you can see that is not really uh, named correctly. I want to give it a good name. This is the, the component and this is the actual mesh that it in, that it uh, is actually importing. And I also want to put it uh, below the scene component there. So what I'm going to do here, let me delete that. I'm going to change here in the sub import node. You can see it tells you where it's putting it here. This primitive path basically means where in, in the graph are you putting this? By default, it's putting it in the root, the root node, which is you can see at the top there. That's the root node. Also, the scene is it's under the root node, but we want to put it uh, inside the scene. So it's just as simple as just typing scene here uh, before the the dollar OS. And again, dollar OS is just getting the name from this. That's why this is being called sub import. And you can see now it, this is be below the scene, but we also need to change the name of this so it actually has the actual name uh the other thing i like to do you can see this mesh zero one or, or mesh underscore zero is the actual mesh uh, you can see it's type of, of type mesh here this is just the transform and this is the mesh the actual geometry i don't like to see it like this because we're going to have a lot of geometry uh imported and just everything being called mesh zero is just problematic for me so what I like to do is go back to uh, SOPs in this case, this mess out that we have here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do here, uh, anywhere here, I'm just gonna add a name node. And the name node is gonna allow us to create a name property, which we can uh, actually use for naming this. And you can actually see this 
update in real time as I do this. If I put this in the name here, just put uh, name, I mean Mesa, which is table. You can see it renamed there that. So this, uh, this name node here, uh, this parameter name, it's taking and going there. So that's how this is linked. So this name parameter uh, gives it, uh, gives them the actual mesh a name. So that's what I like to do. So this is actually a component uh, of, of this is basically my asset and this is going to contain several things. It's also going to contain the, the uh, materials here. So always just add your name property there so you can actually have it uh, like that. This is how I like to work. Uh, also, this guy, you can see it's giving us a, a warning here saying uh, it has no uh, no safe path. Uh, this Mesa guy is, has no safe path. Well, this is something about USD and USD, uh, since this is not USD, it's just going to be saving it in converting basically this object into USD and saving it somewhere. And uh, it actually needs a path. If you don't give it, it's going to give it a default path. So it's always important to just give it a path. And the way you give it a path is you just go here and I, uh, this is how I like to do it. Just add a configure layer node uh, to this. And then here, the first thing you can enable is the save path and they can just uh, give it a place to save it. Click here. I'm going to go to my project. In my project, I have a USD folder. And then there's uh, a lot of USD stuff that I save. I'm going to create a new assets uh, tut folder so we have an assets folder there. I'm gonna call this Mesa uh, asset underscore asset dot USD you can also use USDA for for a text representation of this if you need to I'm just gonna use the binary way of this and uh, just type it as a USD uh, so there you go so that's gonna save it as a USD you can see now if I select this guy it's now happy and the the warning goes away uh, again it's just a warning it's gonna do that automatically but it's better to for you to just have control of where this stuff is being placed uh, again if i want to later import this mesa with with all the the shaders and stuff that i set up here i can just import this usd asset and it's going to contain all that stuff so it's really important to just keep your uh, stuff organized so now we're going to start creating uh, materials which is uh, really cool so let's uh, let's create a material library is what we need so we need a material library and this material library is going to hold our materials this is basically think about this uh if you're familiar with houdini as the same as the mat context which i have here in a tab here uh, it's basically where you're going to create your materials uh, the same exact way. So just it's exactly the same thing, but is this called a material library? It has some other functionality here, which we're going to use, but it's exactly the same as the math context. Uh, if we go inside this node, of course, you can see we have now, we are in the math context, we're in the Bex Builder context, which is where we can create materials here. So I'm going to create first a principal shader. So let's create the principal shader here. And the principal shader, it's going to be for Karma, of course. Uh, this is the, the, the Houdini integrated uh, shading con uh, materials. Uh, I'm going to use uh, a prefix for naming my notes. So I know it just by name what uh, is used with what renderer. So for Karma, I'm going to use KRM. And I'm just going to call this asset matte. Because we're going to have uh, several copies of this. So I don't want to be renaming all this. No, I could rename this to Mesa. Let's just rename it for now. But I'm going to make it a little bit more generic uh, later. I'm going to add a funky color here just to see that this is applied in my object. But uh, I'm going to change this uh, in a few minutes. So we have this uh, material created. If we go back, uh, you can see... How do we even use it here, right? So what the hell? So the thing is, this material library has to be populated. Uh, so you can see that we have this fill materials button here, which is it's going to be your friend, your very, very good friend. So be but before we click this, or let me just click it to see what happens. You can see if I click that, I have this KRM uh, material here and the path to it here, right? So now 
we have that available. And if we go back to the scene graph, you can see we have now a materials section or scope as, uh, as this is called. And then under that, we have that material that we just created, which is there. Again, you can see that this is under the root. And uh, in this case, we don't want these materials under the scene. Uh, there are um, workflows where you want to maybe do that. Uh, you want all your scene materials in one uh, context, and then you assign them uh, to specific objects. In our specific case, we want the materials actually to be under the mesa here or the table under the asset. So we can make this asset uh, portable in a way when, when this uh, asset has all the shaders assigned and, and uh, everything is done, it's going to be saved to this USD file. And then we can just later import this USD file into whatever uh, new um, scene and it will just be already shaded for us. So let's uh, do that right now. The first thing we need to do uh, for this is to set where the container is going to be placed. In this case, uh, here is not a primitive path is the, the container path. I'm going to clear this first because that is going to change. So I'm going to uh, change this to, let's say a scene. If I just place that to scene and, and, and click this, you can see it's going to place them under the scene. But again, I want it under this Mesa, right? So I'm going to type here, uh, after scene, I'm going to type the name of, of this, uh, it's going to call Mesa like that. Right. So now if I auto fill this, I'm first clear this and auto fill, you can see now this object is under this Mesa and it has that material there. So this again is what I mentioned. If I have this object or this asset uh, with a, its own stuff packed there, I can just bring it to anywhere else. So you can see this is become a container of the, sh the, the geometry and the materials, and you can put anything else you need for this asset there. Uh, also in this case, uh, actually we don't really want to have this, this object just directly under the scene. We need to create, uh, an, an, a new level of layer or layer, uh, that is going to be, um, our geometry. So here, instead of just put it, put in scene back into this sub import node, let's just type here, geom, which is, uh, the geometry context that we're going to put there. And now you can see here we have scene and then we have geometry and then we have this Mesa. If we go here, this guy, uh, just lost this reference because it's, it's looking for, uh, something called Mesa under scene, but it, it just, since it wasn't there, it just created a new scope. So this needs to be on this, this geom, right? This geom context there. So now if I put that there, clear and out of fill, you can see now it's, it's in the right place. So this is where we're going to put everything and where we're going to put our materials here. For now, this is going to be, uh, this way. We're going to do some automation of this so we can do this faster, but I want to show you even of the saving of this, but I want to show you how I'm getting to this, uh, to this result. All right. So here, uh, we are having assigned the material yet. So if we go here to the material library, there's also, uh, an assign material. You can see there's an assign material node. You can just select the mesh here and assign the material here. You can see if I say, uh, primitives will be this guy, I just drag it and, and, and drop it here. And the material will be this material. This will be more. If you let me disable this, uh, highlighting of selection, you can see we have assigned the, the, the material. Now we just set it to orange to, for testing. This will be more if you are working, uh, in, in another, uh, in another, uh, workflow where you have, uh, all your object, let's say, uh, a big robot, um, asset and you have just working on that asset and you want to have all your assets in one place, all your shaders in one place, you could use the assigned material. You can just use it in this context as well. But I, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the spirit of saving a little bit of notes here, I'm not going to use the assigned material. The, uh, the material library already has a, a, a material. I mean, the material library already has a place to assign 
the material on the uh, mesh here or uh, the material to the mesh so i'm gonna use this for this uh, so i'm gonna use this for uh for my asset so i'm gonna go to the material and drag the mess out here to this geometry path and you can see this it has been assigned this is exactly the same we can go here and uh, change this and you can see the mesa is being updated and of course karma will work now if i change to karma you can see karma is rendering that uh, again if i show if i uh switch to render man for example uh that actually works i'm not sure <laughs> how render man i mean i think hydra is basically creating a, a usd surface i guess and it's just uh rendering that property but but it might not work with all the renders you can see arnold even needs a light before he can do something and redshift i think is the same so let's go to opengl and let's start doing more stuff here to the um, setup so how do we assign uh, a different shader to the different uh renderers so they can recognize well we need their specific shaders for them their specific materials so this uh principal shader is going to be for karma so that's why we name it like that uh, and then we can let's use uh, a fixer surface material for render man so let's call this uh, pixer mesa and this is going to be for the mess for the render man now that we have that one if we switch to render man you can see it's like uh well why is it green if i set this to gray in this case or red for example or even blue why is it doing that well what we need here for for the setup to work is we need a collector so this is a collect node that we need to create just create a collect node and the collect node just take shaders and these shaders uh we can connect the surface to that and then we connect this brdf out to this you can see this has two shaders and the important part here is that we connect everything to collect that we want to uh, be picked up by the by the uh, different renderers. But now you can see, again, this is not gonna work because we have uh, an issue here. We're assigning this instead of assigning this collect. So this collect is gonna be become our, our global shader in a way, or our Uber, uh, Uber shader, Uber, Uber shader. Uh, so, one thing I, I want to do here, and I'm gonna show you the issue, you can see all these guys have this material flag on. If I go up and just clear this and autofill, you can see now I have three uh, materials here, which I really don't want to, because I don't want to assign this karma or this pixel material uh, directly. You can see I have, I have them here in my graph as well. What I want to assign always is this collect one. So I'm gonna go here, disable these flags just by clicking those and this is the only one that's going to be picked up by the the autofill you can also just go and, and delete this but that's not uh i mean if you have a ton of shaders you're not going to be doing it yourself or you can just fill this manually if that's what you want i like this autofill uh button there uh, so you can see now this guy it's called collect and it's just the only one that i have here and now that is the one that I'm gonna assign the the uh, material uh, the the geometry to actually. So now let's grab this mess and assign it there. You can see now it's green. If I go to render man, you can see in render man it's blue because I changed this to blue. So now it's working. It's it's using the specific renderers, uh, the the shaders for the renderer. So let's uh, create the the same thing for Arnold uh, and Redshift. So. For Redshift, you can just use the RS material as well here and connect it there. Let me just put it in the second one. It doesn't matter the order. The collector is just going to know. You can see the the Redshift one. It's uh, red, red for Redshift. And uh, and then I'm going to call this RS Mesa. Man, it's, it's really, really, really important in Solaris that you have a good naming convention because if you don't, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble, really. Uh, more, more importantly, if you're doing a lot of uh, shading networks for different renderers like we are doing here. So let's just do uh, the other one for Arnold. And for Arnold, we have the standard surface, right? Uh, this is gonna be not able to connect directly to this. You can see this guy has an error. And if you have this error, 
the way I mean this works, but the way you have to do this, you don't have you don't plug directly the standard surface there. What you do is you put a, an Arnold uh, Arnold material builder. You create this network first, and this is the one that you are going to be able to connect. So I'm going to call this AR AI uh, Mesa Mat. So now we can connect this here. Uh, of course, we're going to have to go inside this node by double clicking it and creating the standard surface here. Uh, so we actually have this surface here and connected. Let's go uh, put this uh, to, I don't know, purple there. Uh, and now this should work. And this is going to be our setup. Again, disable this uh, material flags for this, guys, so we don't uh, expose those. And actually, we don't need to click this guy again because this collect is already there and it's already applied. So if we go and change this to Karma, we have this green. If we go to Render Man, we have this blue. And if we go to uh, Arnold, we have nothing because it's dark. And Redshift is going to be the same. So let's assign, let's create a light here. So I'm just going to create a dome light here at the bottom. Dome light. So we can just render this. Let's, sh yeah, dome light is fine. So let's go to Arnold now. And you can see we have that purple that we assigned. And Redshift should have this red color we assigned. So there we go. You can see Redshift has the red color that we assigned. So this is, this setup is, it's basically working. Right, so this is the first step we need to set up this uh, material. So now let's start assigning uh, some textures to this uh, object here. So all this uh, setup we're doing is gonna pay it off uh, after. So we're gonna make this, we're gonna basically automate this a lot really. So one thing uh, that I want to mention, and this is a specific uh, renderman thing, now that we're going to start assigning materials, I mean textures, is that uh, I have this, this is this, this is the setup, you should have most of these textures uh, for um, for this project. If I go to this uh, Mesa uh, materials, uh, texture, sorry, if I go inside here, you can see I already have the text version of this, guys, which is the, uh, the version that Renderman needs. So... One thing is that Renderman in Solaris does not auto uh, generate the text materials. Uh, so we need to generate those manually. So just as a demonstration, I'm going to make a copy of this folder uh, where I can uh, just delete the, uh, the Renderman version of these textures. And uh, I'm just going to have these textures that I exported from uh, Substance Painter. And the way I'm going to uh, convert this, guys, in Renderman, there is this new uh, texture manager. So you can see if I open in, in any of these uh, panels, you should have this uh, Renderman texture manager. If you don't have that e exposed, sometimes it, it's not there. Go to this uh, Python panel editor, uh, go to this tab menu, and just select this guy and put it to this side here. If it's not there, just do that and hit apply and accept and it should be. Now I'm going to click this little cross here and go to new panel type and then open this texture manager. And this texture manager is going to allow us a uh, really, really simple way to convert our textures to render my format. So you can see we can pick, uh, uh, we can parse the name, uh, the, the uh, scene and he would try to find some things, but it it does it doesn't find them in Solaris, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna pick a directory here and select that directory that I created temporarily. Uh, this texture uh, Mesa two, so I'm gonna select that, and you can see it links finds the textures that are available there, and it starts converting them uh, right away. As you can see this is being converted already. You can see the the setup of the process is happening down here. It's telling you the, the progress of it. So you can see these guys are already uh, converted. You can, if you leave your mouse over there, it tells you what's happening, how it is, uh, what it's doing, if it exists, uh, what the setting is using. Uh, by default, I just let, let uh, all these uh, default settings, except for if I go to the, for the environment, texture let's we have a uh, an environment uh, HDRI image 
So if I open that, you can see this is already converted, but I changed this guy to here instead of texture and it changes to environment map. And then that is going to be used, uh, have the settings as, uh, as an environment light. So environment map, and that's how you are going to convert those. Uh, if you don't have, uh, images converted, just do that. And once this is just uh, green, it will be done. You can see here. Now we should have in this case, we have, uh, one copy of this with the, that TX, uh, TEX texture extension there, which is really important to have. So all of these files already have them. So I'm not going to worry about that, but it's important to know that because if, if you are having issues with that, you're going to have just a pink, uh, scene in render man. <laughs> all right. So let's go inside here and start assigning the textures in karma. I'm just going to assign them really quickly here. First, I'm going to, uh, set this to white because I don't want it tinting on my textures. I'm going to go uh, to the textures section here and enable the base color and find that base color. Uh, always use your, your hip variable here, uh, click hip to, so it knows where, uh, find the asset relative to the file you're working on. Uh, the other way is you can use job as well. If, uh, but for this, uh, for this file, so it plays back in, in your place, uh, finding your side, I'm going to use hip. Uh, let's go to textures now and, uh, let's go to that Mesa that we were. And I'm going to choose the base color texture there. And you can see now we have already a base color. Uh, if you're not going to use, uh, karma at all, if you're just going to render in, in render man, for example, or Arnold, I still recommend you do this because this shader is going to be used for the open GL display. If I, you can see if I disconnect that, uh, if I'm going to karma has nothing, if I'm going to just use, be using render man, it's fine. But if you go to Houdini GL, there's nothing. It's just going to be white. So I recommend you use this even if you're not going to use Karma as your final renderer, because uh, it just makes it, uh, use that, uh, in OpenGL, which is great. So I'm going to assign the roughness as well, turn down roughness, and then just assign this roughness map, uh, the normal map. I'm going to enable this and, uh, set the normal map there. So this is actually done. You can even see the normal map here a little bit in the viewport. Uh, you would go and do the same for the other, uh, sh renderers here, but I'm not going to do the, the whole thing here. Uh, the same, I, I'm going to try to make this, uh, automated for me a little bit. So, uh, we do need to create a few nodes here. Uh, but, uh, we're going to automate the, the signing of the texture. So we don't have the, to do this for each one of them all the time. So you can see now this is good. The only other thing I need to do here for karma is just, I put this roughness all the way to one. So it actually has the correct roughness there. Okay. So I'm going to create, uh, the other nodes that we need for this, uh, for redshift, we need an RS texture node, and this is going to be R A S base color. And we're going to plug this to the, uh, diffuse color. We're going to, I'm going to duplicate that, but I'll drag in there. I'm going to put a, a roughness, roughness node. So this is just basic, uh, shading. You should already be familiar with this. This is going to go to the, uh, reflection roughness. Uh, if, uh, you're not sure, just click on this and see where you're connecting this. Then I'm going to have uh, a normal map or is normal map node. This is going to be connected to the, uh, overall, uh, bump input here. And this, I'm uh, going to have this. I'm just going to rename this or is normal. So this is the, uh, redshift part. Let's go do the same for, uh, Pixar for render man. We need a Pixar image, Pixar texture, sorry. And again, we're going to do the same Pixar, uh, base color. This is going to be plugged to the, uh, color diffuse color here. 
Again, you can do the same. Click here and see where you're connected. Connecting stuff. Roughness. We're going to connect this to the specular roughness here. And we're going to do a few changes to this uh, shader. But I'm going to show you that in a second. So we also need a pixel normal map. And this is going to be plugged. This, grab this in this uh, global section to the bump. And let's just call this pixel normal. Oh, not like that. Pixel normal. There and lastly, we're gonna go inside of here. We're gonna use an image. In normal, they are called image. Uh, always, you can just middle click here and make sure you're using the right version of this. If you use a, a, a texture from Mantra, or Karma is not gonna work. So I always just make sure just by middle clicking and see that this is start starts with Arnold, and this is the guy that I actually need. AI um, base color. This AI I actually grabbed from Arnold. They call this, I don't know, they, the library is called AI. Uh, this is going to be plugged to the uh, base color there. You're going to get, uh, actually copy this guy, call this roughness. And then we can connect this to the, actually, I'm going to connect this to the specular. Arnold uh, gave me a little bit of a weird result when I connected to roughness. I'm going to put it in the specular, uh, but it varies. Uh, sometimes in the roughness is fine. Sometimes in the specular is better. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe if you're uh, more familiar with Arnold, you know why uh, this happens. But uh, should be the correct way will be just to connect to the specular roughness and that will be fine. But I don't know, Arnold gave me a few different results than the other renderers. Uh, the other image we need, let's just copy this and let's call this normal. And we need a bump 2D, not a normal map actually. There is a normal node in, in Arnold, but it doesn't give you the same result. So I'm going to use this bump and plug this bump into this normal input there. If you wonder how, wondering how I made this expanded, this, this three little buttons at the bottom. If you look, click the first one, just makes it compact if, uh, completely. If you click the middle one, just show you what is connected. If you click the third one, it just shows you everything. Uh, so once it's connected, I just leave it in the second one so I see what is connected. So this is the way we're going to put, and then we need textures for that, right? Well, we're not going to just connect them uh, directly. What we're going to do is uh, something a little bit more uh, interesting. So here in the uh, material library, we're going to create some parameters here. Let's go here and say uh, edit parameter interface. And we're going to add, if you never use this parameter interface, basically just you can add more parameters to this interface to use them for whatever you want. In my case, I want some texture inputs so I can just grab those and link them to the different shaders so I can assign them in one place and uh, and basically automatically pass them to the other materials. So we want to have here uh, a file image uh, input. Just uh, pass that to the other side like that. And then we're going to call this base color. I'm going to call this text base color like that and this is going to be the display this is the input the in, uh internal name and this is the whatever label we're going to say here so uh let's call this texture base color like that and if i hit apply you can see it's there and this if i click here you can see it's allow me to select an image which is great so i'm going to select this guy and press d three times to have uh copies uh, this is going to be for the roughness. Again, this is one way to do it. You can do it in, in different ways. 
but this is how I decided to do it for this. It's going to be the roughness and then I'm going to do the same for the uh, normal. In my case, I'm not using the uh, um, the displacement, but if you're using the displacement, you can also use the displacement input. I'm not going to be connected that. Display placement, but I'm going to create the input if you, the case that you want to use it or if you need any other inputs, you can add them here. Okay, I'm going to just click that. I mean, uh, close that. Now we have this input. So I'm going to select the the textures here, actually, the roughness, uh, the normal. Of course, there's different ways to do it. Some people uh, or sometimes I even done uh, just selecting a folder and, and grabbing all the textures and, and populating them uh, automatically. Maybe even create the shaders if you need to. If you need to go that route, you can for sure. Uh, it's pretty simple to do in Python. So now instead of using, let me just click here and say parameters, instead of using the paths here in the shader, I'm going to use this, this path. So I'm just going to drag here from the name, drag and drop it to where I need it to be and say relative channel reference. And then you can see that is linking to this parameter here. So that's going to be great. So now I'm going to do the same for the roughness over here, relative. And then here in the bottom map, same thing, same thing here. Drag it, relative reference. You can drag it you can drop it on the name or in the field, it's the same. So that now it's linked and I'm gonna do the same for this guys now. So you can see, I have this base color, gonna do this, relative channel, the roughness, same thing. And then the normal, same thing. So I'm, if I change this material, which we're going to do, uh, all these parameters are going to be populated by, uh, automatically by Houdini. So this, this, uh, base color in, in Renderman needs to be linearized. This roughness does not need to be linearized. Then this normal map doesn't there. Now I'll do the same for this guy, uh, base color. Roughness and normal. And that's great. Actually, I that's the wrong one. That's a displacement. There we go. So now let's go up. Uh, the other thing I need to change here for uh, a few of these materials, actually for rend Redshift as well, I need to change this to GGX and I need to change uh, I think that's the only thing I need to change for Redshift and for Renderman. I need to go here and change this to physical actually. And let me see if I have this assigned correctly. Specular roughness and change this edge color to white. And here in the advanced section, change the specular model to GGX. This is for, uh, so it matches uh, the shading I had in, uh, in uh, Substance Painter and also, uh, Arnold by default uses GGX. So they all match a little bit better. I think Mantra also uses GGX by default. So this is, uh, it's gonna, the, the roughness is gonna be, the specular is gonna look, uh, match more, uh, it's gonna match better, uh, between the different renderers there. So I think that's the only things I need to change in Arnold. Um, in Arnold, the Arnold's fine. Okay. All right. So now that we have the setup done, uh, we should have all the renderers uh, working correctly. So let's save our scene. Be careful uh, to always save your scene. And let's uh, test this. Let's go to Karma. And since let's Karma, it's working fine. Let's go to uh, Renderman. And Renderman is not working fine. And we're going to see why in a second. You can see this is why I meant by these pink uh, scenes in Renderman. <laughs> Arnold. All right. Arnold seems to be working fine there. Uh, it's not fine. The, the normal map, it's a little bit too high. Uh, so let's go to Redshift. And Redshift should be okay. And there it is. I think the normal map might be a little bit 
uh, strong on redshift as well, but it is there. Uh, I think they're almost, they're almost fine. So one thing in RenderMan is, remember we converted those textures to, to that, uh, that text texture. Well, we need to add this, the extension here, just dot txt at the end here. And you can see now one is good. This one, it's the same, actually not comma, but dot <laughs> period. Uh, and then normal map, same thing, text. And uh, I, the normal map might be a little bit too rough here, so, or too high. So you can just change that to taste, uh, right? Okay, so now, which one was the other one that has, oh, Arnold has a big, issue on the normals uh, and the normal map on Arno are super strong. So let's go here to the bomb map and change this to point two, I think was my value. There we go. That's uh, no, that's actually too big. Still I think 0 0.02. There we go. So our no normals are super uh, sensitive. So there we go. Now it's working in all renders. We have it on Karma. We have it on Renderman, Arnold and Redshift. Super nice. Okay. So the other thing we're going to automate here before we finish this lesson is all this deal with the, uh, the naming here and then putting this guy in the correct space and having these guys in the correct, uh, graph and then saving this to the correct asset. So we're going to do a little bit of a, uh, setup here to automate all this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna do this here in this sub import. I'm gonna add a parameter as well. Let's go to edit parameter interface. And then I'm gonna add just a string. I need a string. I'm gonna put it here uh, below this sub path. I'm gonna have this string, drag it there. And you can see it's there. I'm gonna call this uh, mesh name. Just so we have this mesh name. I'm gonna, the pretty name, I'm gonna make it mesh name as well. And that's all I need to do. I'm going to apply and accept. I can even actually, let's go here to channels and set the default to dollar OS, which is what I want to have there instead of just empty. If I hit apply, you can see that's the default that is there. And that's what I actually need. And this is basically just going to contain this, this name of, uh, remember we did that for the scene as well, just dollar OS. I want this parameter so I can reference it in, in different areas. So what I'm going to do here in the Mesa and the way I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, parameter, the result of this is just middle clicking on the name. I can toggle between the result of the expression and the expression itself. So I can just basically have this replace anywhere I need it. In this case, maybe if I need to change this layer safe path to somewhere, if I need to save this, I can add it uh, on, on the path there, but for this, I think, actually, I don't think I'm going to use it. Well, I'm going to keep it there, but, uh, for this material library, I'm going to add, I'm going to need that to replace it. Everyone where I see this Mesa here, I'm going to replace it with the name of this uh, basically. So I'm going to select this material library, click here and say, I'm going to add another, uh, another input here. So I'm going to add here another edit parameter interface. I'm going to add another input. This is going to be a string and I put it at the, I guess below this guys, I'm going to name this mesh name as well. This is actually the one that I want to use. And this mesh name, I'm going to write an expression to get uh, the name of the node that is connected to this. So it's going to be a really simple expression. Uh, so it's, it's the expression is, um, forward tick, uh, there, the single tick, which is in my keyboard is, uh, below the escape key, uh, left to the one key, just press that. And then we can type up input. This is basically just saying, give me the operator that is connected to this. Give me the name of it like that. And then close it with the little forward tick mark there. Again, if I uh, middle click on this, up, uh, if I type this correctly up, input, you can see it there. 
there should be like kind of a if I middle click on this, you can see you should result to the name of this node, right? If it is node is called whatever like that, you can see this is the, it's getting that name. So that, that way we can, uh, we can have that name here in this context. And then what I'm going to do is just replace it everywhere that I have this Mesa. So I'm going to, uh, say, I'm going to right click on this and say, copy parameter. And here where I have Mesa here, I'm going to replace it with this expression, just selected and then paste relative reference like that. So it's going to be replaced by that. So basically evaluate to the same thing, but you're going to see why we need to do that. Also here at the top, we want to do this to that relative reference. Whenever we're anywhere we have Mesa, even in these textures here, I can do it. Uh, Mesa for the textures to work. You have to have the same naming conventions on your on your textures if you want to for this expression to work so you can see it's going to work for some of my things but not for everything so i'm just going to replace this uh so I replace this and all this and i'm going to see you in the uh, after i'm done all right so the, if you didn't do any have any mistakes here uh it should look like this and it should still show you your texture there so that means it's working so the uh, last part we're going to automate here is uh, uh, doing the same thing here in this configure layer. So again, we're gonna add uh, an extra parameter here and let's add a string. I'm gonna add it all the way uh, all here, I guess I'm gonna put it here. Again, call it mesh name. And this is gonna call be called mesh name. Doesn't really have to be the same name, but I'm just doing that uh, because I'm really creative. Uh, so we have this mesh name and here we want to get, uh, we're just gonna say, grab this, uh, copy parameter, paste it here, relative reference. So just getting, actually you can see that I got an error there. It's called messing name, which is fine. It's not gonna uh, mess with that, but, uh, but you can see now we see mess and name everyone. It's fine. Uh, you can, we got this, so we get this Mesa name again, which is basically getting this name all the way back down here. So again, we're going to copy this and put it here. Are you going to see why we've been doing all that there? So you can see if I middle click here, you can also, uh, you can see that this is actually evaluating to the right thing. And it's uh, this path. It's, it's going to save it in the correct place. So now. If this is great and working and everything is fine and we have this configure and everything is going looking fine and why do we do all that setup without uh, that automation part? Again, if you want to do that automation, it's fine. If not, it's 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 fine as well. But if we click uh, select this branch here, which is going to be kind of our setup for the whole thing, I can just alt and drag this and what i can do is actually just go here and say mantel which is the the cloth and you can see that if i click here actually sorry uh we missed a spot let's delete this because that was we missed a spot here which is what we actually wanted uh we want to copy this guy and paste it here reference so that's the object that we want to import we miss a spot there so that's why we had this mesh name there so now we can actually or you could also just put uh dollar os there but i i like this uh extra parameter so now we can actually go here and first i'm gonna go here to the mantel which is the next one that i want to import and i'm gonna make sure that we have a name because right now we don't and I'm going to call it uh, where we want Mantel and that's it. Now I'm going to go back to stage. Now grab this, duplicate it. And the only thing I need to do is change this and this should input that assign textures to it and work. Well, this doesn't have the, <laughs> uh, wait, no, it should. Let's uh, let's plug it over here. 
and there it is. I might have missed a spot. Is this, oh, yeah, I missed this spot right here. So let me do that again. So it's good that these things happen because you know where the errors are. So I set to replace all the places with mess I was and pretty sure it will tell me, hey, you missed a spot, dude, you missed there. So now I have every everything done and now this should work. Change this to mantel and view this and this should be shaded. There we go. You can see the textures are there. This is uh, a sign. All the textures are assigned in all the uh, in all the uh, objects here in all the shaders. And here, the save path is also uh, updated to save it to the specific asset. So, on, the only thing we need to do is plug it in here, and we should be able to render it. All right, you can see there it is. It's in Karma. It's in should be render in RenderMan and should render in Arnold and Redshift. All right, uh, that was a long way doing this, but this is the bulk of what we needed to do for this. Now, the only, uh, I'm gonna keep doing this for the rest of the, the objects here. And the only uh, different thing you're gonna have, uh, let's copy this, for example, I have some of these objects do not have just one uh, material they have uh, several pieces so in the case of this totopos which is one that has two groups actually you can see you have a group for the plato and a group for the totopos uh, the way that we're going to do this uh, deal with this i could have just used uh, usds but i mean udims for this but um, these objects have uh, different roughness stuff and yeah, I could have just used UMD, UDIMS, but I didn't. So the way I have this or the way I prepare this, I just set different groups for this. You can see if I go to S and select by group, I have a group for the plat for the plateau there and one for the topos. So just two groups and then no, no other groups at all. So it's going to be very clean. You have to be clean and organized with this. So now here you can see we have two and they have to be primitive groups like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a name by groups. You can see there's a name by groups option there. Select that one. She's exactly the same uh, name, but it's just have this name by group uh, toggle on. And then instead of this piece asterisk, I'm just going to delete that and leave it as asterisk. And that's gonna create the name attribute. If I go here uh, or geometry spreadsheet over here, the primitives, I can see we have uh, a name by the groups of this, so which is great. Which that's exactly what I want. And that way in Solaris is gonna import us two uh, meshes. If I go here and let's uh, import this. This is not gonna work with the same uh, way because again, I guess I said that the topos has two objects but this is going to be imported you can see this is important now in solaris and you and you have the totopos uh plato and and totopos group so we have these two objects which is the, uh, the different objects that we want to assign uh, materials to right uh all the rest should work in a way uh but this is not going to work because we have two objects two different objects uh in this uh for this um mesh here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this is going to be the plateau like that and uh this i can i can do this if i want to but the way i'm going to deal with these ones they have multiple inputs i'm not going to use this you could just select and create uh, a section for each input here with folders and stuff if you want to do that uh but I'm not gonna go that route. You can see I can create a folder here and put all these guys in one folder, call this, for example, uh, texture one, whatever, or texture two, if that's what you want. Uh, well, we can do that actually if, if, if that's, no, I'm not gonna do that. Um, uh, and then you could just add different tabs here and add more 
fix add another folder there you can see if I add another folder there you can add more things to here and uh, apply you can see I add another folder and add more textures there I'm not going to do this I'm actually gonna delete those parameters from this guy what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna do it a little different so I'm gonna assign it to the first node so this is another way to do this uh, I'm gonna assign this to this you can see I'm creating this specifically for that plateau uh, so I'm gonna uh, actually as you can see now this becomes an issue I don't want these guys to be called Mesa I'm just gonna call this asset because I'm gonna be reusing this guy all over the place uh, so that's why I didn't want to call it specifically for this so let's just do that and then and now I'm gonna assign him to the first one and this basically is gonna become my master for the other shader so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna assign them here I'm gonna go to my hip uh, location uh, textures uh, this is what the said the plateau plateau de barro this gun I'm gonna select the base color and then I'm gonna do the same here for this text plateau uh, this is the normal I mean the roughness and let's say like the normal same way hip texture plateau normal right so now what I'm going to do, this is processing, it's uh, get these parameters floating here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to connect these guys to this now. So this, this is going to become basically my, my um, master here. I'm going to do the same for this and for the normal, the same thing like that. And for uh, retina for actually I can even do it. Uh, I could have done this. Uh, for the two at the same time but I don't know no actually no because the names of the parameters are different so this again do it for the base color of pixel rendiment for the roughness for the normal map there and then for Arnold do the same so this is the normal map first let the reference the roughness to reference and this guy let the reference so now uh, this in this case if I change the need to change the textures I just need to change it in one location which is this guy and now we're going to make a copy of this and we're going to do that exact thing that I just mentioned just selected everything alt drag below and this is gonna be the to topo and this guy uh, for changing the tutorial, we just need to select this guy and change this this uh, material for so this one uh, object, one place here. So go to the topo and change the base color, just the base color there. Uh, select the roughness as well, the topo roughness and the bump map. Again, if you have displacement and stuff, you can uh, assign those. In the same way, let's go to the normal map, and that's it. The, the topo should be passing to this these guys as well, so we shouldn't be we shouldn't have any issues there. You can see the expressions update, so they're referencing this guy now, not this one over here. So now we need to go here, clear this, uh, out of fail. All the other things uh, still work. This is going to be put in the same in the correct place on the on the scene graph, and uh, and that should work so now we just need to assign these guys uh, manually because that is not going to work so the plateau is going to be for this plateau and the, the topo is going to be with this the topo and then we connect this guy to here also this should work as well you can see if i middle click here this should be saving it to the topo's plateau asset which is great we don't need to worry about that we only need to worry about the inside parts and if we go and select that here you can see that this guy is there, it's in the correct place, the materials are in the correct place, uh, and these guys are in the correct place, and we have our scene, uh, I mean your container object in the correct place that we want to have it. Uh, the other thing that I'm gonna do here, uh, apart from that, is 
adding a, an X form here to, to put my plot to where it needs to be. I'm going to select this to view that result. And you can see this guy by default, the X form work a little bit different than tops. So you have to tell it exactly what to, to manipulate. You can see it right now is complaining because it's trying to manipulate the material library, actually the collections. So you don't want that. So let me delete what it has this in the primitives and the primitives basically, uh, you can uh, view it as uh, the groups in, in tops. This is telling me what do I want to move? So what I want to move is all mesh primitives here. And why I deleted that is, let's see if I, uh, control middle click here makes this, uh, the default as well. If I don't delete that, I, if I select this, you can see it appends to this. So I want to delete the default value. So now uh, if I select this all mesh primitives, it's going to just transform the, the meshes that we have. So this is going to be helpful for us to place it for placing the, the object in the scene and also for uh manipulating and laying out the scene also here uh, we're not going to talk a lot about layout uh the layout is going to be just pre-done for you but there's also this really cool thing in 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 solaris which is the edit node you can see if i put this guy up like that i can uh create an edit node here it has to be at this level because it needs the table to collide with so if I select this edit and select this uh, guy here, see, I can move it exactly as before, but the cool thing is that I can enable this use physics node. And now you can see if I select this, enable this draw simulation meshes, uh, geometry, it can show me that it's showing me that this green thing is going to be used as collision stuff. So if I, uh, drag this down, you can see now it collides with the, with the table uh and i actually even if i for example if i rotate this guy rotate it and try to place it on the table in this direction uh like this you can see it collides with the table and tries to uh, place itself in the table like it's simulating how it should be even if i rotate you can see it's just colliding with the table and, and trying to place it uh, where it should be which is great actually uh, just be careful because it is it, in a really, really heavy scenes. It gets uh, really heavy to calculate this. So just be, if you want to use this, just be uh, mindful of that. But uh, yeah, this is actually really, really nice stuff to lay out your scenes in Solaris. Uh, so you can just go and place your plate on the table exactly. It's not going to be any, there's not going to be any gaps or anything. So. All right, that's it. That's it's the uh, Unify material setup and everything we want. Uh, next stuff, we're gonna be uh, starting to light our scene and uh, the layout is gonna be uh, done for you. But if you uh, want to learn more about this, I suggest you practice all this setup or just do it the way you would uh, want to do it or adapt it to the way you work, etc. All right, uh, that's it. Let's go to the next lesson.